Welcome back to it, Japanese Tutor, and we're gonna do Bishop versus Knight End Games, Chapter Seven in your uh, Devaretsky uh, End Game book, the End Game Manual. Thank you for the host, brother. And so here, um, we're let's go back into it. Bam! So it's white to move, and I just want to give you a second. So we can't take this because of this. So what's the winning plan for for white? We can't push because the knight will sacrifice itself for the pawn, and it is a draw because you have insufficient materials to mate. So, what do you guys think is the right move? So, I'll give you, you know, a few seconds, to try to figure it out, and then I'll read from the text and we can go over it together. Let me see if I can close the window because it is quite loud. There we go. All right, so um, he says in the chat, oh, copy Potter, what's up? Um, with this configuration of material, there is not, in my opinion, a single fundamental theoretical position that would be worth mentioning. The outcome in all end games of this sort depends on wholly, um, sorry, depends wholly on whether the stronger side can place his opponent in Zugzwang. In the present case, this is possible. So, the move, the textbook move is bishop b3, king c5. Oh, thank you for the follow. I really appreciate it. It's amazing. And welcome to the lesson. Okay, and so, bishop b3. And then king c5, and... He says that on king e5 instead, oops, sorry, that's not king e5, king e5 instead, that bishop e6 is just winning because we're going to take the knight. And this is Zugzwang, right? Because he can't defend the knight anymore. Any checks fail. So, okay, so good to know. So king c5, bishop a2. Basically saying, hey, the knight has to move. Maybe he can play here. King c6, which is what he plays. Oh, and if he plays uh, here, knight g4, then king e6 just wins. Because we get the same thing because of... Uh, let's see. Sorry. King g4, king e6, and if he tries to play back... Um, we can just take, and if he tries to play here, then, and where is he, where is he going to go? Okay. So also Bishop D5 wins as well because if takes, then hello. Knight of four check. Doesn't really matter. King of six or something. And then we can play here. So let's go back. So no, no knight g4. So instead of knight g4, uh, king c6. Seems logical, king e6. Knight h7, threatening the check if he pushes. Bishop d5 check. King c5, king e7, king f Knight of six. And here, Bishop F3. Cutting out the squares, cutting off the squares, and then the Knight has to probably move again because if he can't attack this pawn, we're gonna take this. Knight G8 check. King E6. Knight of six. Bishop e4, exclamation mark. So in the text, he says the decisive Zugzwang. Let's put black's king on e5 and other variations are different, but the evaluation of the position, it doesn't change because white 
the goal of white is to maneuver the same Zugzwang. So if knight captures, let's say the knight doesn't capture. Let's say he plays, I don't know. He can't play anything, right? Because king, he does move here. He can get there in time. Knight captures e4 is probably the, his best bet. Uh, okay, let's try this. King captures f6, but then yeah, we can't even get close to the pawn. Yeah, okay, great. That that solves it for me. Uh, so he said, instead of this, let's set it up so we're, that the king is on uh, on e5 instead. Okay, so let's just waste a move. And he says, bishop b3, king f5, bishop f7. And the point is to make a zigzwang position. So it's kind of cool. So if you have a pawn and bishop, what you want to do is you want to maybe not get it on the opposite colors because we don't know that yet, but to maneuver this into a zigzwang. Oh, wow. Yeah. Bishop b4 is so nice. Yeah, exactly. Why not take the bishop? Because the pawn promotes. Exactly. Okay. So, king f5, bishop f7, king g5. Basically just holding on to the knight for this. King g5, bishop e6, cutting off this square. King g6. King f8, wow, saying, hey, you can't come down here to protect your... Whoa, okay. I like that. So let's say he plays h7. Now king e8. So this is with an x clam. Knight f6 check. King e7, and we basically passed our turn. This is <laughs> so. In order to give his opponent the move, White has to triangulate. Uh, tri sorry, White has triangulated with his king. So basically, he moved here so that it would be his turn now. Now it's the same position, but it's it's his turn. So that that was kind of cool. Um, so now something has to move. King g7, and I'm assuming here, bishop f7, knight g4, and then bishop d5. And you should not play here because of this, and you can't even promote, right? So if here, you think, oh, I'm going to queen, but no, check, and gg. Um, and if you say, oh, I'm going to promote to a knight so he doesn't have that. Then I'm just going to take here and it's a draw anyways. Okay. Knight g4 is a very strong move. And on knight g4, he plays bishop d5. Knight e5. Bishop e4. Very nice. Controlling all the squares and also controlling the king. King g8. Six, knight f7, d7, king f8, bishop d5, knight d8 check. Oh, and bishop d5 was a really, really nice maneuver because it controls all the squares that the knight would be able to go to if the knight were here. So very nice, very nice maneuver. Uh, so bishop d5, knight d8 check, king d6. King g7. I mean, where else can you go without giving up the without giving it up? So yeah, gg. I mean, I think both moves win. King c7 and e7, but yeah, seal the deal with that. And king e7. So that's kind of cool. Okay. Okay. So now in the diagram position. Let's move the king to c7, the white king to c7. 
So let's go back. So I'm just gonna make my move, make a move, make a move. Oops, I missed him. Okay, so I gotta triangulate. Okay, so. So now we move it to c7 instead. So it says now in the diagram position, let's move the white king to c7, which we did. It's not hard to see that black can draw this and not just with his knight on f6, but also on f8 or e5 or f6. Which brings us to the wait, conning. Oh, conclusion, sorry. For a successful defense, it's important to keep the knight far away from the enemy king. Okay, so if you're trying to draw this and you have the weaker side, it's important that you keep your knight away from the king. Cool, noted. But even for the knight placed close to the enemy king, Zugzwang is not at all a sure thing. Let's return once again to the diagram position. Let's suppose that after bishop b3, so we're going to go back to the position. Bishop b3, knight c5. White, instead of the waiting move, bishop a2, plays king e6. And then you have the strong knight h7. King e7, knight f8, and now it is zigzag for you. The king, we can just stay there all day. Bishop c2. Because white cannot allow the, the check on g6. King c6. King d5 is also possible. Bishop a4 check. With the bishop on the b1 to h7 diagonal, the king will be shuffled between c6 and d5. Very nice. And if instead of, instead, let's say in, instead of here, you went here, what happens? You know? Can you play there? No, we just play king c5. And we're good. And it's a draw. Okay, so let's hit f8. Check. King c5. Bishop e8. King d5. Bishop f7 check, king c6, bishop h5, king c5, exclam draw. d5 here is a mistake because of bishop f3, e5 or c5, and then uh, bishop e4 with the motif of drawing, if you guys remember. Can't go here, can't move the knight anywhere, so it's a draw. Oops, not that one right so you can't go anywhere all of these are blocked with the king and with the bishop and so the king has to move away and then we take the knight and gg so instead of there instead of shuffling to d5 in this case king c5 and now on bishop f3 so what knight g6 because now you're allowing knight g6 so you and why is knight g6 so important Let's say king here, knight of eight. Knight of eight, right? And it, it just repeats. So very, very nice technique. Thank you for the draw. King eight seemed like a draw. Bishop is better than a knight. Not always. Uh, in, in most end games, yeah, but not always. So thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for uh, following. And there was another one. That's Eskovich. Thank you so much for following. I really appreciate it. Okay. Um, so it is not uncommon in such situations for blacks to have a pass pawn too. The stronger side strategy remains unchanged. White must still play for Zugzwang. The defender, however, now has a new resource, deflection. Sometimes the pawn distracts the bishop from controlling an important square, which the knight 
immediately occupies or the reverse can happen sometimes the knight is sacrificed to allow the pawn to queen and this is going to be our last example for this video or the video on youtube <laughs> um so this is leningrad 1953 and i'm just going to set up the position so let's go into the new position bam boom and well I, i'm probably going to do like an opening uh, lesson before i end today so I, I know i haven't been on so i i feel like i need to give you guys a little bit more okay so let's put the pawn here let's make you guys good and then when you win all the money in the world open you guys can donate Okay, and it is white to move. Let me just make sure I have everything correct. Great. Okay, so here I'm gonna just let's give you a little second to absorb it. Um, this is wow, that's a hard name to pronounce. Lisitsin. No, that's easy actually. Versus Zagorovsky, um, in 1953 in Leningrad. Okay. So now that you absorbed it, bishop e8 would be a mistake in view of h5. Because if bishop captures h5, knight d7, king e6, knight b6, and yeah, we kept the knight away from the from the king. The king can't go there. We can't stop it. We have to go around to chase it, and when we do try to chase it, hello, we just come to the other side. So bishop e8 is a mistake. So the correct move is bishop f5. h5. King e6. h4. King f6, uh, knight to c6, and d7, knight d8, bishop e6, I would love to play bishop d5 here, king e4, stopping bishop d5, Bishop h3. And after bishop h3, um, and this is the most the most accurate move uh, threatening bishop g2 and king e7. But the immediate king e7 um, was also possible. So, bam. Knight f, uh, king f3. King e7. Knight b7 away from the king, always go away from the king in this situation. That's what we've learned. After king e7, sorry. So bam, 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 knight b7, bishop f1, guess threatening here. Bishop f1, and it looks like it's gonna be gg town soon because of king g3. Bishop a6, knight c5, d8 queen. Yeah, and you can't stop that. Thank you so much. Thank you for the follow. I really appreciate it. Okay, so um, I know I said this is going to be the last uh, pos position of the video, but let's go into a more complex one and then we'll end with that one. So Nazaretsky versus uh, Simonenko. Let's do this. That was pretty cool. And I like all these like cool end games because we can kind of transition from our own end games. It's like, oh, we've seen this already, right? And we can try to implement them in our games. And if we do successfully, then we win. We win more games. The bishop is here and the pawn is here. It is white to move. Perfect. Okay. So h5. 
So this is a really cool move. Exploiting the fact that the pawn is temporarily poisoned. If bishop captures h5, king d3 is a draw. Bishop g6, king c3, draw. So cannot take that. Bishop h7, h6, king c5, king e2, king to d4, trying to get in there, saying, yo, I, I want to zoos on you. So after king d4, king d1, king c3, let's examine other attempts. We don't have to do that. King e1. King c2, king e2, bishop d3, like we've always learned, king e1, king e3 is a mistake because of king c3. So king e1, wow. King e1, bam c2, boom, 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 a b3, king b1, king d1, bishop c2 check, and we don't really care about losing the knight because of the pawn, bishop h7. And we agree on a draw. You sure you're going to learn a lot? Actually, I also have a lot of videos. So this is a draw because they can't maneuver. So the game ended like this. After um, bishop h7, um, king d1. And after bishop c2, always repeat. King e2, bishop g6, king d1, bishop h5, check, king d2, king a2, h7, b1, knight c1, check, queen here, draw because there's no way to check the king and we're gonna check as well. So the best bet is just to play here and trade off. So very, very amazing job. Um, drawing this, I would have messed this up three times already. <laughs> so that's all for today. And thank you so much for all the likes and all the new subscribers. Um, even though I haven't posted stuff recently, um, you guys have been subscribing. So thank you for that. Um, I'll see you next time and let me know in the comments what you want to learn and I'll make a video about that. Bye.